Today I'm here with Dante Martinez, comedian and actor. Thank you for coming to my house. So I always ask people, how do you introduce yourself at a party when people ask who you are? Oh, I usually don't. At a party? Yeah. I just say, hi, I'm Dante. I never, I never tell people what I do. I never, ever, because then they, you get a whole series of questions that you don't want to answer. I'm really glad you guys came out, man. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's weird doing this. I... They start asking you about, oh, that's great, you're a comedian, you're an actor. And then they assume that's all you do, and they're like, oh, but I make my money waiting tables. Hey, baby, that's talking right there. Still not listening. That's my boss, but uh, hey, we're not work. So I'm a, I'm a failed comedian and a, and a never was actor, so. How would you describe your comedy? Um, I, I, don't, I don't smile very much. I'm kind of a, a dark soul. You know, I'm a dark horse. I, I don't smile. And it's not because I'm upset. I'm just avoiding crow's feet. But, uh, I just talk about my personal life. It's personal, I guess, is what I would say my comedy is. It's personal to me. Uh, I talk about uh, my shortcomings, I guess. My what I, I, I talk about what I'm most uh, insecure about, you know. I, I use my insecurities as the shield and the sword. Talk about how broke I am. You know, like, at work, my boss is always telling me to smile all the time. He's like, Dante, if you make eye contact with somebody, shoot them a smile. It's a reflex. They'll smile back. They'll feel better. You'll feel better. And it's true. People will smile back at you. But I was, like, walking past this woman in Deep Bellum. She's beautiful. And I smiled at her. And she goes, um, no. <laughs> what do you mean, um, no, lady? I didn't ask you a question. I really want to talk about my culture more. And uh, I don't know how to do that in a way that... Yeah, man, my parents are immigrants. I'm a child of immigrants, you know? Like my mom, my brother and sister come from the slums of Guatemala. My dad comes from where they don't have toilets inside the house in Mexico. It's called Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to talk about, you know, I'm such a am racially ambiguous person that uh, I, I, people assume I'm white all the time and I'm white passing. But, but, but racially ambiguous, what that really means is like every other time I meet like a 65 year old white man, he hates me, but he doesn't know why. He's just like, <laughs> Don, Don, Donnie? What's your name? <laughs> I'm calling Donnie. <laughs> Do people come up to you uh, thinking, Do you widen my comments about other people? Yeah, all my life growing up. <laughs> <laughs> no. they, they, claw, they, they claw their way here to the you know, to the bottom of the middle class so I can be the first in my family to graduate high school, the first to go to college to major in theater. <laughs> I went to college to learn how to play pretend as an adult. <laughs> it's disgusting, man. The only thing I pretend these days is that my parents are proud of me. What's the best thing about being a stand-up? I know before I was a stand-up, I was kind of way more annoying. I was way more uh, gregarious with my friends, you know, like always had to be the center of attention in my friend group or in conversation with people and just kind of like not knowing I was doing it, but after after I started stand up, realizing that that side of my feelings were satisfied, that I could, you know, shut up amongst around my friends, around people and not have to be like so performative around people. How does it feel on stage? How do you describe the feeling of when things are going well? When it's going, when you hit that perfect happy medium, that stride, and it feels effortless. It's just flowing out, and um, all the things you have planned and worked on are just working. You're almost not thinking about it. Like that, you get into that kind of unthinking state and just being totally present. When it's going badly, you're sweating, you're freaking out, self doubt, hating yourself. When when it goes badly. It's bad until like the next time you perform and it goes well. So you it just it's a stank that's stuck on you. <laughs> <laughs> but when it goes just right, I mean it's, it's 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 definitely a drug. It feels like a high. It's a great. It's like better than anything, you know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You've been um, gone through the stages of, of being an up and coming comedian. Um, and now you're established, you're still here, you perform a comedy to audiences well, on a regular basis. With, in, the, in comedy, you're a nobody until you're somebody, man. And that's, it's, it's like a brutal, I'm not even a headliner yet, you know? And then, and that's, uh, yeah, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go on the road alone yet. I'd still have to, I'd be the supporting act. And it just takes time to get there. I mean, I have friends that are headliners that are, have been in it, doing it less time than me. I'm still striving towards a direction where I, I hope I actually hit and get there, but, you know, I think most people don't get there, so...
And if I don't ever become a headliner, I mean, it's it's the journey itself has still been very fulfilling and I'm still very enjoyable and a lot of fun and it's given me a lot of identity and self uh, awareness and. It's true. <laughs> I don't know, man. My stupid friend, he said, "Phone addiction is the new alcoholism." And I'm like, "What happened to the old alcoholism?" <laughs> What's the relationship between drinking and creativity? Any reflections on that? Uh, well, I think between cr drinking and creativity, I would feel like you feel like you're being more creative. And maybe there is a little spark where those first couple of drinks, you do relax yourself in a way that uh, maybe something is freed up to come out of you that wouldn't have come out had you been completely sober. And I've had experience that a lot. But as an alcoholic or just a drunk or whatever you want to call it, you know, I'd have a few drinks and then I, you know, you hit that little like, ah, yes, that little zone. But then just one drink more and you're sloppy or your punchlines aren't hitting, you're slower. And for me personally, like, um, I'd be drunk on stage a lot, like borderline, like grayed out drunk, you know, almost blackout. And, and I would be thinking I would kill, you know, I was like, oh man, that was a great set. I don't remember any of it. But I record most of my sets on my phone in my pocket. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like, you know, you'd be brimming with, happiness and I was like oh I just murdered and then the next day you listen to it and you're sober and you're like oh that was awful they're laughing at me they're not laughing with me they're or they're laughing at not the joke they're laughing at the failure of a joke or they're laughing at the drunkness or they're laughing at I don't know but not what I intended them to laugh at but early on though I used to get so drunk because I was scared to go on stage I was afraid mm -hmm. so I would drink and then I would go do it and then uh and that, that first maybe like year and a half of stand-up was brutal because I was so bad at it. Oh, I don't know, I'm cleaning up my act, you know, I, uh... <laughs> that was the old me. I'm better now. Yeah, following your dreams is a great way to make 30 grand a year. And it really is, man. It's, it's a great way to be uh, lower middle class. I'm semi-judging these outcome-oriented people while secretly still wanting material possessions that are nice it's a weird weird world we live in isn't it but that that's the that's the honesty that i'm searching for from myself from other people we're talking to if you find your lane and um, that you can add value to people so to speak then you can make money out of that through media and through other things you know what corporate people do a lot it's always corporate it's all corporate people i don't know why they always ask your name mm -hmm. And then they like to boss you around by your name. <laughs> and uh, it's only people from the corporate world that do that. If, 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 that is uh, true. If button ups and stuff like uh, when I when I was a drunk, and I guess I still uh, have the potential to be a great alcoholic. Uh, you know, you would just ignore a lot of those things. And so this last, because I've been not drinking now for a year and three four months, you you really start to like focus on the things you are ignoring when you're drunk all the time, not ignoring those little emotional cues in your life is what I've been doing this last year of my life. Cause every time I sense or have a feeling of this is when I would take a shot. This is when I would have a drink. Now I'm just staring it in the face. I'm like, what, what, what is this? What is this feeling? What is this? And I'm doing comedy. I guess, like I said, you know, you're, you're focusing on what you're feeling, talking about what you're feeling, but now even more than ever, I haven't been ignoring my emotions. I haven't been ignoring those little pits in your chest that you're like, Oh, you know, what is that? What you know, those, I guess not being afraid to do that constantly and on a daily basis kind of um, is fulfilling in its own way. What's a, a, a life lesson? What's a, a tough lesson in life has taught you or a valuable thing that you want to share with everybody? <laughs> guys, you guys rule. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's my time. I'm done. I really think just being a kind person, being a, I think the more money you have, the less you have to be nice to anyone, the less it, your behavior and the treatment of other people, uh, the, le the less blowback you have for your behaviors. But when you're poor working class people, it, 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 it's only your behavior. The only way you're affecting people is how you treat them. You know, be kind, don't hurt anybody and do what you want to do. Find what makes you happy and go for it, you know. That's a lot of Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me.